The colors of the rainbow Together we're beautiful too We can be like rainbows When others need a friend By sharing with them God's love That never ever ends Red and orange and yellow Green and purple and blue Like the colors of the rainbow Together we're beautiful too We can be like rainbows When others need a friend By sharing with them God's love That never Welcome to Worship at Zion today, all you hearty weather fools. You uh, have taken on the elements and so far survived. Be careful out there. Um, just a few announcements to uh, bring to your attention today. First of all, um, our uh, young people planning to attend the National Youth Gathering this summer will be serving uh, the Lenten Supper this Wednesday evening taco bar. So get your taco shoes on and come to church on Wednesday night and enjoy that and worship at 7 o'clock and uh, confirmation follows, uh, follows that. Um, also uh, in the bulletin are two announcements. One is called Walking Together. This might be new to some of you, but this has been going on in our our synod, kind of the Lutheran churches in this northwest corner of the state for nine years, I believe. And, um, and it's a wonderful one-day event where churches come together and, and there's right now there's about 40 different workshops um, that, that will be presented that you can have your pick of the run. And uh, some of it will be kind of best church practices. Uh, from churches around this uh, part of the state uh, and, and we always come back with great ideas. Others uh, might be some kind of hot button topics that uh, some speakers will come in and talk about. Um, but information is there regarding sign up. If you uh, want, just put your name on the piece of paper and give it to me and, uh, and we can get you signed up and, and kind of coordinate rides from there. Also, Easter flowers. Easter is coming very, very soon. And uh, if you would like to provide a flower for the sanctuary, uh, that's the form that you use to do that. Um, also, I'm, I'm going to be kind of hands off with a lot of stuff today, hands on my guitar, but um, I'm not going to be serving communion, been kind of fighting a kind of a beast of a cold here the last few days, so I'm just you know, and, and I probably won't greet you after church either, so hi. <laughs> hi for now, and, and hope you all stay well. We uh, continue our worship at this time with a couple of songs that lead us into worship, number 772 and 773.
Precious Lord, take my hand, 773. We continue in the front portion of our hymnal on page 94. We confess our sins. And God grants us his forgiveness. Uh, would you please stand as we make this confession? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. 
And we confess our faith now with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me as we pray. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uh, you may be seated. We'll sing hymn number 793, Be Thou My Vision. First reading today is from Exodus 20, 1 to 17. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. 
On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The second reading comes from John 2, 13 to 22. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all, the, all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jewish then responded to him, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days? <coughs> but the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you, Gloria. Uh, I want to thank John, too, for, for stepping in and, and helping out with music today. It was uh, one of these weekends where most of our other musicians were not available, and I said, don't worry about it, we'll take care of it. And then I said, John, <laughs> can we take care of it? <laughs> so, thank you. Uh, we'll take a moment to pray as we... As we hear God's word. Thank you, God, for giving us this word. And there are times that your word is, seems a little strange to us. Um, we don't always understand necessarily what you are doing, but we pray that you would give us open hearts and open minds, that we could look to you and that we could still trust you uh, no matter what comes our way in life, that we would believe that you are God and that we are not, and that your word is always given to, uh, given for our benefit and given to strengthen us for the days ahead. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Well, today we heard uh, the, uh, one of the first tellings of the Ten Commandments in the Bible. There are several places in the Old Testament where those Ten Commandments are summarized, not necessarily always in that order. But uh, this is kind of the official listing here in uh, Exodus chapter 20 of those Ten Commandments. We also heard the famous story about Jesus overturning the money changers' tables. And at this point, I would say, let's not get distracted. That's from the king of easily distracted. Let's not get too distracted. The lead into this story, it strikes me as what uh, is more important, the more important part of this story. It is almost time for the Jewish Passover. And that to me is, has become a more important part of that story than the overturning of the money changers' tables. 
As we read this gospel, we realize that here, at least in the gospel of John, this is recorded almost immediately after Jesus selected his disciples. And so, according to John, this comes very, very early in the ministry of Jesus. And so it might do us well to recall that the Passover was a central celebration in the life of all the Jewish people. It first came about in Exodus chapter 12. Uh, the Passover was the celebration of God's saving grace when God rescued the Jewish or the Hebrew people from more than 400 years of slavery in Egypt. This was the time of moving beyond that slavery into the new land, into the new life. And in Exodus chapter 12, verse 14, God said, This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep this feast of the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as an ordinance forever. Meaning, this will never change, right? Forever means basically forever. <laughs> and so, the feast of celebration would be an ordinance, it says, a requirement forever. So here in John chapter 2, Jesus is celebrating this festival that had been celebrated up to that point for about 1,500 years. Nothing new in all those years. The same festival, the same command, the same heart, hopefully, in that celebration. It was, uh, but so historically, a 1,500 year old feast to celebrate God delivering his people from slavery in Egypt. We also have uh, the benefit as we read the scripture of being able to look forward in time. Okay? When Jesus and the disciples were celebrating at that point in time, they didn't know what would happen three years later. We do, because we can read God's word. We can read the story when Jesus and his disciples would gather in an upper room, it is sometimes called, to celebrate that same Passover feast three years later, but this time with Jesus, it was not nothing new. Later in the Gospel of John, uh, in, let's see, in John uh, chapter 13, Jesus says, this is a new thing. We're reminded also in Revelation 21 that Jesus would later say, I am making everything new. <laughs> Even the things that should never be made new, right? Jesus says, I'm making everything new. Not just some things new, not just many things new, not just the big things new, but everything. Jesus, remember this, makes everything new, including this ancient festival of God's love and grace and power and deliverance. This festival that had not changed in 1,500 years, Jesus is changing it on the spot. Here in John 2.13, we learn that it was almost time for the Jewish Passover. In John 13, the Passover becomes the setting for Jesus making another thing new. The Passover would become the very first Holy Communion with his disciples in which Jesus gives his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. So in that quiet, ordinary day long, long ago, Jesus entered the temple and flies into a rage. It appears to be a rage. But why? Well, think about it for a moment. What is the purpose of the temple? What is the purpose of a place of worship? It's to worship God, right? And as Jesus makes everything new, he even talks about making the temple new. And of course, the people didn't understand 
what Jesus was talking about, they're looking at the temple and they're saying, it took 46 years of human effort to put this temple together. There must have been some kind of place. And Jesus says, I can make everything new. And they said, you want us to tear this place down and you say you can rebuild it in three days? Preposterous. Crazy. Jesus makes a strange comment then about zeal or enthusiasm for that house. He said it would be his own destruction, John 2.17. Zeal, pride for the working of human hands would be the undoing of the gift of salvation. Zeal for your house, Jesus said, will consume me. John 2, 17. So here was all the business of running a church. And we all know that it takes a lot to run a church. And if you've ever served on the church council, you know that there are a lot of details that need to keep all of this together. And although we are doing our best to keep everything together, <laughs> right? And we're doing our best to keep this building sound and well. I hope we all realize that the purpose of this place is more important than this place. We are here to worship God. And as Jesus makes everything new, we pray that he would make us new too. Redeemed, saved, forgiven, we are so blessed. The same was true in Jesus' day of that old Jewish temple. It was a place to worship. And the old system of sacrifice dated way, way back to Genesis chapter 4. <laughs> I, I kept kind of flipping back and back and back and back even before Cain killed Abel. God's people were making sacrifices to God. And as the biblical story goes, there weren't a lot of people back then. <laughs> there was Adam and Eve, and they had messed up. And there were their two kids, Cain and Abel, and they weren't going to do much better. So the sacrifice was important. And every consequent sacrifice in the Bible books that would follow, were commanded by God so that it would draw people into a regular and intentional way of communicating with God as the gathered people. It would be a way for them to bring their sins to God with the understanding that God would save his people. In the Exodus, God saved his people from their slavery. And as we understand that slavery, that bondage to sin, every sacrifice since would be for the forgiveness of sin. God is always working on our behalf to save us from ourselves. And just as Jesus makes all things new, even the sacrifice for sin would now be completely different. No longer an animal slaughtered and placed on an altar to be burned. The new thing in sacrifice now would be Jesus himself. The Passover lamb, Jesus, who removes sin, as it says in Revelation 7, 14, they have been made white in the blood of the Lamb. And then in 1 Peter 1.19, we are redeemed by the precious blood of Christ, a Lamb without blemish 
or defects. So Jesus, we see, is the perfect sacrifice for our sins. So how else can we be saved? Truly a rhetorical question, right? How else can we be saved? Are we saved through goats and cows? Are we saved through dollars and buildings made by human hands? No, of course not. Are we saved by our own efforts? Are we saved by our own piety and self-righteousness? Are we saved by our own rules and regulations? Absolutely not. But Jesus saw the people in the temple that day, living in thoughtless ways, thoughtless, completely, making artificial sacrifices that meant no more to them than to pick up a goat and drop it off for the priest to burn. Utterly meaningless. Jesus is God. And Jesus could tell that their hearts just were not in it. They were merely jumping through the hoops. The prophet Isaiah noticed this a long time before Jesus came on the scene. God gave this message for Isaiah the prophet to give to the people centuries before. Stop bringing meaningless offerings is the prophecy of Isaiah. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths, and convocations. I cannot bear your evil assemblies, your new moon feasts, and your appointed festivals. I hate with all my being. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Encourage the oppressed. Defend the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Isaiah 51, 10 through 18. God's intention was to remove sin in a new way without meaningless hoops to jump through, but through the very intentional act of God himself, and now Jesus sets that stage. Get the garbage out of here, <laughs> Jesus said. God wants your hearts. God wants your heart. Psalm 9, verse 1, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Psalm 13, 5, I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. Check out the Psalms this week. <laughs> Maybe just look for the word heart, my heart. Psalm 19, verse 14, May these words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Psalm 26, verse 2, Test me, Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and mind. And in many other Bible readings, God tells us that all he really wants is our hearts. Jesus could easily make the point and we all know it too, that buildings come and go. But the heart dedicated to God is the heart that is able to worship God forever. We come here not just to perform some meaningless religious duties. We come here to spend time with God and to be part of the body of Christ, the gathered believers. We believe that in this place and through God's word, God makes everything new. In Psalm 51, we pray, create in me a pure 
heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit. (laughs) It's all I've got to give you, God, is my broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, God, you will not despise. God loves us as we are. God wants our hearts. We are further reminded in this reading from the Gospel of John that after all these things, after all these things, the miracles, the teachings of Jesus, after the Passover feasts, after flipping the tables in the temple, after the death and resurrection of Jesus, after all of these things, the disciples remembered. John 2, 22, it says, the disciples remembered. Now we know the disciples, they were not always the quickest to catch on to any of the new things that Jesus had to give them. But after all of these things, finally, they remembered. All that stuff was not about a building. It was about the power of God to make all things new. And when Jesus can make our hearts new, then we too can believe and we find new life in Jesus' name. Today we receive that new feast. We receive the bread and the wine. Today we receive the body and blood of Christ. And this is not some meaningless feast, merely helping us to remember something that happened a long time ago. But instead, this Holy Communion is truly what Jesus said it would be. It is the forgiveness of all our sins. That's what Holy Communion is. When we receive it today, that's what really happens because Jesus said so. So we take this old feast too. But we receive it in a new way. We receive it in the Jesus way. And when Jesus says, this is my body, and when Jesus says, this is my blood, he does not mean something else. Right? Bad theology tells us that it only helps us remember an old old event. Good, true theology tells us that Jesus forgives our sins because that's what Jesus said. And so we receive this gift again and though, as though it were for the very first time, receive it with an open heart and an open mind and say, I am forgiven. This day, Jesus loves me. That's why we're here. That's why God calls us together. So that it's not just about me. It's not just about my forgiveness. This is part of what builds relationships and what draws us together as the body of Christ. And this is what restores us to one another in in Christian fellowship and restores us completely in God's eyes. God blesses us all this day with the feast of his love. May our hearts be given to God once again. We are here in Jesus' name. Amen. And I ask our ushers to wait upon us as we share our offerings. I'm only human. I'm just a man help me believe in all I could be and all that I am show me the stairway I have to climb Lord for my sake teach me to take one day at a time Do you remember When you walked among men 
Well, Jesus, you know when you're looking below, it's worse now than then. Pushing and shoving, violence and crime. Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you. Give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone now, Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Thank you, John. As we continue with our service of Holy Communion, we turn to page 68 for responsive uh, reading and prayer. Holy God, you alone are holy. You alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beyond the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do, the, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. <laughs> we pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering within this meal among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God through Christ Jesus, by your Spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. And we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we receive Holy Communion today, all are welcome. Jesus invites you himself to receive this gift of new life and forgiveness. If you abstain from alcohol, the center ring of each tray is prepared for you. And if you prefer a gluten-free wafer, they're in the glass dish in the center of the table. If you would take your own uh, wafer and hold it up as you receive the blessing. Would our servers please come forward?
house Everybody is welcome Oh, this is the Lord's house Everybody is welcome Oh, this is the Lord's house Everybody is welcome Come on in and take of the bread of life The bread represents the body The wine represents the blood If your heart is right with him You may take it in love I've got God the Father I've got God the Son I've got God the Holy Spirit The three in one Oh, this is the Lord's house Everybody is welcome This is Standing on holy ground For the Lord is present And where he is is holy This is holy ground We're standing on holy ground For the Lord is present And where he is is holy we are standing on holy ground And I know there are angels all around Let us praise Jesus now We are standing in His presence on holy ground These are holy hands He's given us holy hands He works through these hands And so these hands are holy These are holy hands He's given us holy he works through these hands, and so these hands are holy. We are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. Let us are standing in his presence on holy ground there we continue as we pray Gracious God, you have given us the blessing of your love through this bread and wine, through your body and blood. We trust that your word is true, that we are forgiven, and we place our hearts into your care. Strengthen us this day and strengthen us this week that we might look more to you than to ourselves. Help us to find strength and help us to find your goodness working within us wherever we go. Bless us with uh, your Holy Spirit and bless our fellowship as we continue through this day. We uh, ask that you would hear the silent prayers that each one of us might offer in our hearts at this time.
And our prayer continues with the words of this psalm. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. Where God has pitched a tent for the sun, it comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edges of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. <coughs> Would you please stand as we receive the blessing. <clears throat> The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace now to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory, number 705.